Good afternoon. So nice to have you with us for our sparkling conversation of the day. Welcome. We hope that you will enjoy every minute with us. Uh, today uh, with Brassel, you know, it's all about saying yes to joy. So, uh, Shani, thank you for helping us to say jo uh, yes to joy, even in our planning. So we're excited about the theme. You can start. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just quickly going to share my screen with you. Um, okay. All right. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay. So I truly, truly believe that all our battles and all our victories start in our thoughts and even more so in our mindset about anything and everything. So therefore, the focus of today's sparkling conversation, if we think of planning, is specifically geared towards our mindset. And don't you just love this picture? I just love this picture saying something about mindset, um, how you perceive the world and how you think about the world could be how the world is perceiving you as well. So um, just a short story. My story is... Um, planning was the only theme in the life program that I gave myself a golden star. That was the only one. And I think in my previous leadership capacity, um, planning was just a formidable part of every day. And during the, during the night, I stopped worrying about things and I started thinking about planning and planning ahead. Um, and I thought I was actually quite good with planning. And in these days, I... I, I discovered that I actually also have a development area around planning, and that is that I'm so passionate about my work that I plan it very, very well. But then all the other areas of life, I need to balance and plan as well. So that's where my challenge at this stage lies. So um, that is my little story about planning. And I know all of you have stories and feelings about planning as well. And um, if there were time, it would have been so nice to hear those stories. But go and think about your story, the story that you have. So the aim of today's short sparkling conversation is specifically just to become aware of time and what time plays and how time plays out in your planning. And the point of departure is, you remember in the previous um, sparkling conversation, Chris mentioned two eras. He spoke about the previous era of productivity, where we said to look at the inputs that we give in a specific time, and you work for out eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours, and that's what it's all about. The era that we are in now is all about creativity. And focusing on the output rather than how much hours you spend and putting quality into that. So let's just perhaps get some common ground on planning, if we say planning. So I'm going to share the screen again. Um, okay, so that didn't work very well. Let's see if we can do that again. Okay. All right. So now you can see um, if you look at any kind of a planning technique, they always speak about there are certain actions or activities, and then there are a sequence you have to put that activities in, prioritizing them, and then you start executing it, and then you will get to the goal. So that's kind of the formula that, that's given. But I truly love the simplified version of that that we also use in our um, Bright Star Life program theme 11 or 12, 12, about planning. Planning is all about bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. So it's actually as easy as that. Bring the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. Okay, so what does our brain think about time and planning? And that was so interesting to, to, just have, to just have a look at that. So busy is a thought. Have you ever thought about that? Busy is actually only a thought. And we say we want to manage time. But now how logic, logical is that actually? Because time goes up. 
whether you plan it and whether you don't, whether you use it or whether you don't. So it's not really a question of time management. It's more a question about how do we manage ourselves in planning and using time. Okay, so that was like, what? And then I looked at all the time management coaches on, the, on, the, um, on Google and I thought, do you know this? But just a thought. So two things happen with our brains. Our brains get overwhelmed with noise. All right, and what, what kind of noise is that? It's the negative noise of negative energy when we start the morning and saying, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, you know, I'm so busy. I've got so many things to do. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just so busy. Um, and this week, Amanda referred to the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. I can't find the thing now, but somewhere it says, it's something like, um, I'm late, I'm late, um, I'm late to where I need to go. No time to say hello, goodbye, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. So if you just see that picture of the rabbit rushing around with a, with a, with a clock, um, you will know that a lot of the times that's how we feel. So what happens with us now? So you stand up and you work yourself self up with all this negative energy. I'm, I'm busy, busy. I'm busy. I'm, I'm so busy. There's so many things I need to do. And then you go and sit down and you start working and you think your brain should now focus because you are now starting with the first thing. The only thing that's actually happening is your brain is constantly still in this whirlpool of being busy, 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 busy. Therefore, you really can't focus. And the more you try to focus, the more you think of other things that you want to do or that you need to do. So the only way to stop that whirlpool of thinking actually is just to sit down um, and whatever works for you. Take a walk around the house, drink a cup of tea, do a few stretches. But you need to take the busy noise out of your head so that you can actually focus. So that's the first thing that happens to your brain. The second thing that happens to your brain is it cannot see how much you have to do. It doesn't really know. So places to go, people to meet, things to do. You're running like the rabbit. And when I ask you, what did you do in your previous working day? I, I, could, I can't use the example of yesterday because that was another kind of a day. Um, you will perhaps be able to say two or three or four things, but not that long list of things that you were actually busy with. So it's very important to be aware, what do you do with your 24 seven hours in a day? So think of time as a commodity and compare it perhaps to, uh, to finances. And say every day you get a thousand rand for each hour in the day. So every day you get 24,000 rand. And you can either use that, your hour, and get return on your investment, or on the other hand, you do nothing and you lose it. So the moment that you think of that, you know, I don't really want to use the time because I wouldn't be throwing away thousands of rands every day. So that's the one side of it. The other side is immediately your perception now goes to, you know, I can't work harder. I, you know, I'm, I'm working nearly the whole day. I can't work more. We tend to think that being productive and doing the work and managing our time is all about the work. But we know now it's not. It's about all the other areas of your life as well. So how, how can one go about to then know what you need to do? So we're not speaking about techniques today. But um, that's for another time. But one of the techniques that you can use is a time journal. So you start writing down everything you do. And that's very tedious. Um, you don't read. It's not a nice thing to do. Um, but you need to do that in order to see what did you write down. And then to pattern those and know something more about that. Another interesting thing is to do it to download. You do it to download so that means you go and sit in the beginning of the week and then you write everything down that you need to do and when you're finished you look at the paper and then you write down some more because you let your brain just simmer a little bit and you will get some more that you need to write the interesting thing is you will get some incompleteness the incompleteness which your brain hates 
are those kinds of things that you do that you that you never finish you feel guilty about it i should do that i should go there we should plan this i should wash that so your brain never gets some time to just focus on it it stays incomplete so it always comes back to these thoughts it's subconsciously but it's using energy and going on and on and on so the only way in which you can stop that is actually by writing it down and making a point to take that into consideration as well. Um, and then what's very really interesting, your brain is so phenomenal. So now you are thinking these things and now your brain goes into the mode to giving your feelings about these things because we know feelings actually come from what we think and we know the hypothalamus is the chemical factory of our brain. So what's happening now? Now you get these uneasy feelings I'm not good enough, I can't plan this. Um, and the scary one is I'm not in control. I mean, that's the scary feeling none of us like. Um, so that's what your brain is doing regarding the mindset of time. So if you look at that list that I was speaking to, you will feel overwhelmed, you will. But then there's a lot of techniques again that you can use like prioritizing or how do you transfer all these activities to your calendar which is not the topic for today but there are a lot of techniques that you can use so for you that feel happy go lucky um, that doesn't like planning very much where it doesn't come come naturally now you may feel years like writing all of these things down really just is putting such a burden it's restricting me but in that, in that mindset, you are actually giving yourself much more freedom if you, because that will bring you to a point where you are more in control. So the last thing that your brain does to end off, it makes excuses. Your default is not to do something that takes a little bit energy, that takes a little bit something else, that pushes you out of your comfort zone. Your brain doesn't like that. And what I found is I thought that my reptile brain, that my rational brain will help the reptile brain, but it doesn't work like this. So just quickly think of this. You want to, you need to clean the garage at two o'clock. You decided from two to four, that's what you're going to do this afternoon. Then two o'clock comes and your reptile brain will start saying, oh, you've been working so hard. You don't feel like doing that today. And then your rational brain will come in and say, no, really, you know, it's not a priority. You've got a busy day. You will use too much energy. Then you won't be up and on the going for tonight's seminar that you want to look. So then the two of them gang up. Um, the only way to get out of that, just quickly here, process the urge not to do it now without acting on it. So the urge is going to be there to not do it now, but don't give into that urge. All right, and there's other techniques that you can do again with that. When you speak about habit forming, you will learn there's a lot of techniques you can use to not give into that urge to not do that. So I'm ending off. Your biggest challenge is to show up when your mind makes excuses. And if you think of time, it would do that. So I'm just going to say that again. Your biggest challenge is to show up when your mind is making excuses. You. Yeah, thank so you. that's a bit about time. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Jody. I am going to stop our recording and then we're gonna have a nice discussion on what you shared with us. Always remember that you can like and share on the Bright Star Lifestyle YouTube. Um, and it's nice to have you with us. Um, so please don't just watch that. Please come and visit us also. Have a great day.